So let's talk a little bit about gaining comfort with networking. And, you know, in this first slide, we talk about positive beliefs and overcoming fears. What do you mean by that? Sure. So, uh, and this is broader than just networking, but uh, typically if people are hesitant to do something, there's beliefs and there's fears that, that keep people from doing that. Um, there's some examples, uh, you know, later in, in the slides, but, you know, one specific one that often comes out is, you know, I'm just not good at networking or I'm awkward. And so I'm just not going to go. And so that's, that's the, one of the main ones, but uh, you'll see later that there's, um, I've found that there's eight really common uh, limiting beliefs with respect to networking. And we'll, we'll save the details for a little bit later, but um, you know, I'm a big proponent of uh, growth mindset. And so what that means is, you know, if there's something that you really want to achieve, know that even if you're not good at it now, if you keep working at it, keep practicing it, uh, you'll, you will gain comfort with that. You know, Gus, I've been to a lot of networking events. You know, we have the Mill City USA. We have some other events. And I'm always amazed because you see that group of people, they'll sit at the edge and they will not interact unless somebody walks up to them and tries to engage them in, in, in conversation. And I know that's a natural fear for a lot of people, but as we are going to find out tonight, networking is a key part of that connection strategy, which is part of the long-term strategy you need to find a job or find a new career. And so with that, can I go to the next slide? Absolutely. And before we do that, if you have any questions, please raise your hands or send us a chat. I am monitoring the chat uh, room just as much as I'm uh, switching slides, so to speak. So let's talk about your webinar experience. What do you mean by that, Gus? Yeah, so there's really three things that I think that will allow everyone to, to get the most out of this. Number one is if you've got any browsers up, uh, especially like LinkedIn, you know, if somebody tags you or sends you a note or, uh, you know, your number starts to increase on LinkedIn, that can be distracting. So go ahead and close any of your browsers. Um, uh, one of the things with VA is we're trying to use the term physical distancing by social distancing. So physically distance yourself from your phone, um, you know, even more than six feet away, because we know how our phones can distract us. So put your phone away if, if you're able to. And then the third thing is, um, both Matt and myself, we're gonna throw a lot of content at you. And so hopefully you're gonna gain some insights. So grab a piece of pen and paper so that you can take notes. And uh, this is really geared to help you uh, move something forward and implement something new, try something new. So uh, chances are that if you don't capture it on pen and paper, it may escape you by tomorrow. So uh, those, those are the three main tips that I have for people so that they really get the best bang for their buck out of this. So is there a special offer if they stay till the end? Yeah. So if you stay till the end, uh, I, won't, I won't go into the details here. Uh, but there is a little bit of a free offer for you all. So just hang tight. And uh, I just want to echo what, uh, what Matt shared earlier is if you have questions, you have comments, you want to share your experiences, either raise your hand or throw it right in the chat. And I'm looking at it as well. So uh, we're here for you. Let's go over this slide. You know, I guess this said positive belief about networking. So what do you mean by that, my friend? Yeah, so uh, here we're just, if you're looking for, if you're hesitant to network because you have some of those beliefs that, oh, well, you know, networking is for those that are really trying to sell themselves or networking is, I just don't have the time to do it. Whatever those limiting beliefs are, we can reframe those into positive beliefs. And we'll actually go through uh, an example here. Does that answer your question, Matt? It does. And, and I know what you're saying. You always see those people that are always really confident and they say the right things and they do the right things, but sometimes they really don't have the ability to meet the job requirements. So I do feel that you're paying there. And I have seen people like that that are really good at networking, but like, really? How did he get that job? And so I always have that kind of, 
belief. Yeah. Even now, even though I know better. And if you use LinkedIn as an example, um, you know, you can look at someone and I'm, I'm not pointing any fingers or, or saying anybody, and this is broader than the military transition space, uh, but you'll see what there's that content. There's nothing behind that content. How is it that, you know, 5,000 people have liked that content? What is that all about? Well, it's because they've grown their network, they've established their network, and they're using their network. So even though something may lack substance, uh, their network is, is helping prop them up. And so there's no reason for us uh, that, you know, really take pride in the quality of our work. There's no reason to stop ourselves from shining. So true, very much so. Can I go to the next one, my friend? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and so one of the other things that we're gonna discuss today is uh, really how do you overcome those fears about reaching out? So we'll give you some specific tips and, and nuggets to, uh, so that you're more able to confidently reach out and whether it's uh, your uh, colleagues that maybe have dropped off your radar or whether it's new people that you're interested in meeting. Let's talk a little bit about your journey, my friend. All right, so um, I won't go through all the gory details, but you'll see the meat thermometer there. So if I took the meat thermometer and jammed it in my ear and took a sledge and whacked it and whacked it and whacked it, I would much rather have done that uh, you know, five years ago. I absolutely hated networking. Uh, I just, again, I just really had some negative beliefs about networking. And so uh, I remember one year I was like, all right, I'm going to get serious about networking. I'm going to have a New Year's resolution to meet one person a month. And, you know, that was really extreme for me. And now, you know, I'm talking to maybe six or seven people a week. So uh, to be able to go from that, uh, from one side of the spectrum to the other, it's, it's really enhanced uh, my career. And so, yeah, my old belief was, you know, if I just do good work and I work hard, uh, I'm going to be rewarded for that. And so just where are you from? I've, I never asked you that, but I'd like to know where are you from? Sure. So I spent a lot of my early childhood in Northern Virginia area. Uh, it was early 80s, small defense contractor that my dad worked for, uh, was focused on Navy logistics. So under the Reagan 600 ship, they never got to the 600 ship era, but they expanded and uh, we moved out to San Diego. Uh, and then I finished high school in 90. And so actually moved my senior year to uh, the supply core capital of the world, uh, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. So that's where my folks still are. So you're like me, you're from the Midwest, you know, hard work, you know, don't say much. Yeah. Not too flashy. Okay. Yep. And, and so and you know, were in the Navy, right? Say again? You were in the Navy for four years? Uh, I served six years, yep, for sea, sea duty. I wanted to get my shore duty. So I went back to Great Lakes for that. Uh, lo again, loved all my time in the Navy. And, you know, my experiences with the large consulting firm were similar to the Navy. Hey, here's, you finished that assignment, here's your next assignment. So for me to really go from one project to the next, I didn't really need a network because I had a resource manager that would say, oh, well, here are the next opportunities for you. Which of these are you interested in? Or uh, again, kind of going back to that previous slide where uh, my leadership you know, knew what I was capable of. So they would promote me for uh, promotions and management opportunities. So um, all those worked out really well. And then uh, the company restructured. This was after the 08 uh, downfall. And I found myself on a different team. A lot of my leadership had left the firm. And so it was like, almost like I was a new employee, even though I had been there for for about 10 years. Can I stop you there for a second? Because I have a story to share with you and I, I hear this all the time. You help people get a job, they use LinkedIn and then they stop using LinkedIn. So they stop networking, right? And then all of a sudden, 
something changes, a new boss, <clears throat> a lot of, you know, factors, you know, especially in today's economy, there's a lot of factors. But shouldn't you be always looking as LinkedIn as a place to build a network? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I see it a lot. Um, a couple of people come to mind where they did really, really well. They really grew a following. And then it's like they landed and then they disappear. And then, so when you see them come back and it's like, all right, they must need something. And don't get me wrong, if they were to come and say, hey, I need some help, sure, let's, let's explore and let's figure out what that looks like. Um, but one of the fears, and we'll, we'll get to that, is that what causes people from reaching out is they say, you know what, this person that I worked with three or four years ago, they could probably help me but I let that relationship fade away. So now I don't want to reach out to them because they'll know that I need something and that's just awkward. And so there's some strategies and tips there as well, but um, let's see, uh, that, that's kind of- I just had know. to interject that because I see it all the time. You know, it's like you build this, okay, and then here we are. Yep, so after that uh, company restructured, I went to go to a new project, come to find out my clearance had expired. And uh, even though I had submitted the paperwork, I thought everything was good. It obviously wasn't. So at the age of 42, with uh, not really a strong network, it was in sad shape, and not feeling great about networking, I found myself unemployed. Somebody from our uh, chat said that the guy that was in that picture looked like me, and he's probably right. <laughs> I did get my electrical uh, hair thing, and my wife's going to trim it down just a little bit. Well, I'm just thankful uh, for some product, and uh, that allows me to look somewhat uh, decent. My yeah. hair grows regularly, so you know it's yeah. not out to here yet, but without seeing a barber in a while, it, it gets it gets a little crazy. There you go. So back to this here, let's talk about this. Yeah, so when I was unemployed, I, I just knew that uh, I had won the job search lottery once before, and that was going from one really niche uh, system to teaching that niche system. So I won the lottery then, and I just knew that the lottery wasn't gonna work for me. So I knew that I had to start networking. So, here you are in your journey. Yep. What's next? Yep, so I was awkward. I stumbled, I felt pressure because I knew I, need, I was unemployed, I needed something. And so I wasn't at ease. I was probably asking for too much uh, right away. And so that actually pushed people away. And so uh, bottom line and why I'm here and, and telling this story is I wanna help keep people from making these same mistakes. And you've already touched on really the biggie is you know staying consistent, continually building your network and also maintaining you know, your network. So now here we come to the, what you call eight, Gus's eight positive beliefs about networking and what beliefs are holding you back. And I've looked at this and what we wanna do now is we wanna go through all eight of these and then we want you in the audience to uh, send us a chat and tell ask us what you think are the ones that are holding you back. So Gus, let's go through this really slowly, okay? Yeah, certainly. So yeah, just wanna echo Matt's point there. Uh, if you could, um, so we can shape the discussion, uh, which one of these numbers are jumping out to you? So if you wanna throw the, your numbers that are resonating with you, um, things that may be holding you back from networking. Uh, okay, uh, thanks Dan, I see uh, number two, don't wanna feel slimy. Uh, who else? Okay, I'm seeing a six, don't know where to start. Okay, four is a common one. We'll just give it a few more seconds. Two, six, five, great. Thank you all for contributing. So rather than going through one by one let's see if you don't mind matt let's i'm seeing two sixes i'm seeing two fours let's start with the fours how's that sound 
That sounds good. Let's do the fours, okay? Oh, and I see two twos as well. So I see a five too. I see a yep. five. Just come in. Yep. So okay, let's, let's let's go with four. Yep. So uh, if if you don't want to feel slimy, so the belief there is you know you've seen them the schmoozers the people that you know they do really well they are extroverted they do you know articulate themselves really well and then uh let's see all right yep go navy beat army thanks for that uh so as far as not feeling slimy the key shift there and what worked really really well for me is you're taking the emphasis off yourself and you're putting it on other people so you're learning about what other people are interested in you're understanding why they're there what are they hoping to get out of the discussion and you're also you know before that even small talk you're you're trying to figure out you're playing detective what do i have in common with this person so where's your favorite travel destination um you know if there is a common military bond there you know where was your favorite duty station uh what roles did you enjoy the most uh, what are you excited about as you uh, continue your, your transition? So really finding those things in common uh, really helps build that common bond. Uh, and then you're, you're not there if you also think of, I'm here to build relationships. I'm not here to achieve a specific objective. Okay. Uh, I'm here to from Brandon. He says, finding commonality. Um, yep. I'd like to answer that. You know, sometimes it's hard when you see people, what's, what's our common factor? What do we have in common? Yep. I think it's more of being an active listener and then finding the common, oh, I know about that. Or yep. I know someone that went to school there. Or I know a little bit about that place. Yep. So now we're going to go to number six. I don't know where to start. Yep. So... I just put a post on LinkedIn today. So the first, one of the first critical pieces is to really figure out where, what type of role you want and who you want to help, the type of skills that you want to use. And it's the common curse that a lot of transitioning service members have is, you know, we're thrown in so many different positions. We develop so many skills yes, we can be successful in a lot of different areas. But when we say that I want to be a project manager, I want to be an operations manager, I want to be HR and a security specialist, that is completely overwhelming. And the civilian workforce just doesn't understand that. So even though it takes time, uh, you know, you may not know right out of the gate. You may not know what's next for you. Uh, just start taking action and say, well, maybe I do want to consider a career in HR. So let me start reaching out to some HR people. Let me find some HR related events and let me start seeing if that is the right path for me. And so then as you're investigating this, you're meeting people, you're conducting informational interviews, you're, you're learning, you're, you're saying, okay, yeah, you know what? this is going to be a good fit for me. I am finding mentors. Uh, they do think that I'll be able to succeed here. There are other people that have blazed this trail for me. I, I can do that. Or it could be, uh, no, that path requires me to get this certification. And while I'm willing to do the work, I'm really not that interested in it. So, so Daniel just that, had a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean yep. that. So yep. Daniel has okay. a question. He says, how about joining some groups that are similar to my interests? Yep. Yep, absolutely. So it's not just professions, it's markets. So if you're interested in healthcare or if you're interested in uh, consulting or, you know, whatever the different broad markets are, if you want to stay in the defense sector, you know, you can find networking opportunities there. Uh, you've got the military connection as well. Uh, you also have, if you went to college, you've got your college alumni uh, network. You've got the people in your neighborhood, uh, people on your soccer, t your kids' soccer team. You know, there's lots of different areas to, to explore networking. 
I would add one more and that would be your local church or synagogue or Absolutely. mosque. I mean, there are people there that want to help you because you yeah. have that faith thing in the comment. We were also going to cover number four. I feel awkward. I'm not good at networking. Yeah. And if memory serves me correctly, I think we go into detail on four on the next slide. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's touch on five real quick if you don't. I'm going to also talk about number six when I get to my part of the okay. Part. Okay. Perfect. So, just yep. my questions, making sure that you're, you know, we're listening to what you're saying and uh, let's continue, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for number five, I think I touched on that as well. Uh, it's, it's, some of these do overlap a little bit, uh, but the key is, you know, you're, you're there to serve others. You're there to see what other people are interested in and you're there to, to help others rise. And so when you do that, when you make connections, when you share someone's content on LinkedIn, uh, when you uh, give them information about something that they may be interested in, that's all going to rise your value within their mind. And so you're, as a result, you're staying top of mind. So Matt, let's go ahead and go to the next Before one. Before we do that, we have one other, one other point I'd like to cover that is number one. And Diane says, I don't have time, which um, um, I would say that you should try to make at least five to 10 minutes every day for some kind of networking event. Wouldn't you say, Gus, and build uh, on that and build on what's successful for you and also work on things that'll make you better at networking. Okay, yep. next slide. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yes, I said next slide. Okay. Yep. And so, yep. So we touch on uh, feeling awkward here. So the key, if we want to reframe those beliefs, any of those beliefs that we've already discussed, is being mindful of uh, Chris Argeus, Argeus, I'm probably butchering his last name, but the ladder of inference. So um, to summarize really quickly, our experiences shape our beliefs and our beliefs shape our actions. And so if we actually don't take our beliefs head on, but if we take our actions and we create new actions, we can then start to see new experiences. And so uh, for those that are feeling awkward, number one, you can be yourself. You don't have to try and pretend to be an extrovert and, and be really pushy. Absolutely not, you don't have to be. You can just really soak it in, ask questions of others. Uh, and another tip here that a lot of people value is if there's that awkward silence, you know, have a question. Uh, again, play detective, find out what they're interested in, find out, you know, what they're binge watching, find out, uh, you know, something that they're excited about. So really play detective and find out uh, more about them. The more that people are talking in a discussion, generally the higher they're gonna regard that conversation. And it's especially great if it's two introverts talking. By you asking another introvert a question, they'll likely respond and you're able to have a much more engaging discussion there. Uh, so the second bullet there is by really being confident and certain about how you're gonna to respond to, oh, so what do you do? If you have that nailed down and not robotic, uh, but you're able to speak to it eloquently and detailed enough so that somebody says, oh, that's really interested. interesting. Now I've got an idea of how you play into my network. And if there's other people that I can connect you with, I'm already starting to think about that. Um, so I've actually touched on the three questions already. Yep, so use those three questions to explore more uh, from others. And then here's the key one is, and I still hate this today, but uh, you know, having applied this tip, it just works great for me. And it's worked great for others that, I, that I've helped is you find three people. And so you go in and you say, oh, excuse me, everybody. Just, you know, looks like you all are having a great time. Uh, just wanted to introduce myself. And then as you meet everybody, and then you say, so what, what were you guys talking about? Uh, and then they'll get back to whatever their discussion was. And you'll find that one person that's not as engaged as the other two were. 
And so you can now focus your attention on them and maybe ask them a question if uh, they're, they haven't been as engaged in the discussion and now you've got your one-on-one -on -one discussion. Because even to this day, for me, there's nothing more awkward than two people are talking. They're obviously having a, a good discussion and now you're just standing there, uh, hi there, um, or you know, like you're stalking them. So uh, some people feel comfortable walking right up to them doing that. If you do, great, fantastic. Uh, if you don't, no worries. Again, go look for three people. And so here's some potential ways to reframe. And you'll see that the, there's a pattern here. I'm shifting over to the right. So if I blank, and then this will happen. So here's just a couple potential actions that you can take. Um, I'll just let those marinate with you for about you know, 15, 30 seconds or so. And let me, while you're doing that, let me just look at the chat, see if there's any other comments or questions. Matthew had a question. He says, what if you're not sure what you have to share with others? Um, Matthew, do you mind sharing a little bit more about your question? And Matthew, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Um, I'm happy to address the question as it is now. Um, bottom line is, you do. We're we're all humans. We're all in this together. We all have stuff to share. Okay, and that's one of the big. That's another actually belief about networking that may hold people back. Is I don't have anything to offer, or you know, I'm just starting out. Well, if you have that mindset and you no start networking, you're not gonna have build relationships where you can connect others to, um, uh, you're not gonna be able to connect others. And so the more you start meeting people, the more you start learning what their interests are, that's what you have to offer. And even if you're still trying to figure out, uh, you know, what do I need to do to develop myself to make me marketable in this area? You know, that's, that's, that's what you can do. And then even if you're not giving and you do need some things, it's okay to lean on that, but you got to build those relationships first. So hopefully that was helpful, Matthew. Daniel posted this. He says, talk about a post where someone asks a question and answer the question from your heart. Can I jump in here for a second? Yeah, please? go ahead. I'm, I'm still processing that. Yep. I think that being real when people ask you questions, that's one of the biggest things I see a lot with LinkedIn interactivity is like, I like, I like, I like, but if you disagree, well, tell people why you disagree with something, give facts to it, you know, give a little substance to it. I don't want everybody to say, oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. I really want people to actually give me feedback and, and criticism. And that's kind of difficult for military guys because we don't criticize each other very often. Yep. And, and that's, that's commonplace in, in the civilian world too. People sure. generally have a hard time giving, giving feedback. Um, Dan, that's a really interesting comment. Yeah. The more that you can, can engage with uh, either people's questions or comments, that's a great way. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a great way. I'm laughing at uh, Dan's comment with respect to Irish penance. Um, so let's see here. Um, so the more you can engage and really in get people to open up, to share, and that's another, uh, really successful, I think for LinkedIn, uh, recognizing that people are, are either guarded or they're open. Uh, the more you can be open and share yourself and who you are, the more successful you're going to be on LinkedIn. Uh, an example that comes to mind there is uh, when someone connects to me on LinkedIn, I'll typically ask them, hey, so what are, what are you excited about? And again, I'm just trying to understand. And then, so maybe they are looking for a role in nursing in this particular area. Okay, well, now maybe I can start to see who I can connect them with. 
Well, I had somebody over the last couple of weeks say, well, I'm just looking for new opportunities. Said, okay, great. What kind of opportunities are you open to? Well, I'm open to new opportunities. Okay, I'm done. I, I'm not in the pulling teeth business. I get that you're guarded. I get that you don't want to share. Maybe it's hard for you to build trust with you but or, or with me, but you're the one who reached out to me. I'm trying to engage in a discussion. I don't have time for this. So the more you can be open, the, the better off you'll be with respect to, to net, uh, specifically to LinkedIn. And even uh, whether it's virtual or when we resume face-to-face -face networking as well. So let me say something honest here, okay? And, and I agree with Gus. Gus and I, we bannered back and forth for, for about three or four weeks before we actually got to the point of actually having a conversation because I respected his distance and I respected that we had to build trust. And I think that's one of the things a lot of people that are introverts have a misunderstanding about how to do this. It takes time. It takes being honest, like Daniel said, to respond to things and, and telling people specifically what you want to do will make uh, interaction and networking online even more effective. And yep. with, with the pandemic like it is now, and depending on who you read, we're going to have to do more and more of this, you know, in a virtual kind of setting. So we'll talk a little bit more about this in just a second. Are we ready to go to the next slide there, Gus? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Uh, so we wanted to discuss fears, yes. uh, reaching out. Yeah. Um, so our fears will keep us from reconnecting and meeting new people, uh, whether they're new people or people that we've worked with in the past. So it could be that they'll reject me. Um, you know, that fear of rejection is not just with networking, but it's with a lot of things. And so what I want you to walk away with is they're not rejecting you. Truth is, we jump to conclusions, but we have no idea why they're not responding. Uh, so have compassion for them. So let's pretend that maybe they got in a car accident that day. Maybe, um, you know, they've lost someone in their family. Maybe they've contracted COVID. Maybe, you know, there's a million reasons why they're not that responding. Chances are that they're not rejecting you. Uh, and again, there's some specific tips and strategies here uh, to really increase the chance of them responding. Um, before I go into those, let's let's go and build this slide, if you would, please, Matt. Okay, hang on a second, let me get back to it. I was, I was looking at her. Yes. Okay. And so the other fear is, yeah, you know, I, I you know, I just changed my, my, I have a new boss, uh, things are hard. I'm, I've been here for five years. I'm not as engaged as I'd like to be. I, it's time for me to move on. So let me reach out. But, you know, I know they're going to know that I'm asking for something because the last time I reached out to them, I asked for something. So here again, I'm, I'm an open book. I've used this tactic myself because, you know, I'm human. It's happened to me. And, you know, over the last, you know, seven or eight months ago, I used this tactic where start small and be open. And I said, hey, listen, I get that, you know, we haven't stayed in touch over the last, you know, four or five years. I've really valued the discussion or our relationship. I will always remember you for fill in the blank. And I just would like the chance to reconnect and understand what you're interested in and discover uh, what you would find of value. And now you're showing, oh, they just want to reconnect. So yeah, let's let's reconnect. And again, you're using that give first mentality. You're not going and you're saying, hey, I know it's been five years uh, ago uh, that we first connected, but I see you're with this company now and they've got this job rec. Uh, any chance you can send me the hiring manager's information? Whoa, slow down. You gotta yeah. pump the brakes a little bit there. That makes, reminds me of my good friend, Johnny Hancock at USAA. He would get a lot of people to con connect to him, right? And Johnny's so far away from the HR department, it's not even funny, but they would say, hey, I understand you got a job in such and such. Can you help me get connected again? Yep. Yeah, it's like, okay, goodbye. Yep. Okay. 
Uh, and we touched on this. I don't have anything to offer. You, you actually got a ton to offer. Uh, as you meet more people, you'll be able to connect others and your experiences do translate. You just have to reflect and think how they translate. So even if you were uh, in infantry, even if uh, you were a tank driver, there's got to be some way that you boil down your other experiences in the military. You know, don't view yourself as an infantry or a tank driver. You know, view yourself much more broader than that because you do have other experiences. And so think about how they do translate. And uh, as we were talking about the, the second build, I think that addressed everything that I wanted to say with respect to the reject me piece. So I'm ready to move on whenever you are, Matt. Okay. I love this slide because I think everybody that's an introvert should put that somewhere, maybe as a screen star until they overcome their lack of confidence. What do yeah. you think? Sure, absolutely. The, the key is there's so many possibilities that are out there. And if we're focused on our job, which isn't a bad thing, of course, but you got to do more than that. You got to be consistent with your networking because once you are, there's so many possibilities that open. Uh, and my personal story there is after I got my coaching certification in 2015, I was struggling as a coach because I didn't really want to know, I did really didn't know who I wanted to help. And it wasn't until my own networking that opportunity to speak for USO Pathfinder program and hiring our heroes, where they asked me to talk about networking. I was like, isn't that ironic? It's like having 10,000 spoons when all you need is a knife. All right, I won't steal any more of Alanis Morissette's lyrics there. Um, but the key is that I was networking and networking gave me those opportunities. So we don't know what's possible. Uh, there may be something that, hey, you know what? I've never really thought of that before. Let's go down that path. Uh, and so there's just, again, the world opens up when you are being proactive, when you are networking, when you are connecting and people are, are thinking of you. So we got three comments I want to read to you, okay? We'll okay. start with the, um, from uh, Kyle, he says, definitely my number one thought when thinking about networking, it seems overwhelming at first. And I do, I can understand that, you know, it's like, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's hard, but once you get started, once you get comfortable with it, then, then you'll be, will become a better networker. And that also includes the interactive part of uh, networking online, which we'll talk about in just a minute. What do you think, my friend Gus? Absolutely. And I actually looking at Dan's comments. Yeah, please. Uh, and so I want to pull up an example here, if you don't mind. Uh, so let's, I just looked at Dan's profile. He's got 8,090 connections. Right. Hold on. Where is his Veterati post? Here it is. He's a Veterati superstar. Oops. I clicked on. I'm sorry. I got to scroll down again. Yeah. Because I clicked on his profile again rather than the post. Let's see. There it is. I'm surprised it doesn't have more than that. Oh, so I won't share my screen. Well, I didn't like it, but I'm going to like it now. Um, and I would actually take the time to comment because comments are much more valuable than likes. Uh, but the key is, uh, you know, I've seen Dan, he's commented a lot on other people's uh, posts. He's commented on Matt's posts. He's commented on mine, a lot of people. And so he's boosting everybody up. And by all means, he's, he's helping others. And so, um, yeah, I intentionally wasn't sharing my screen. I was expecting to see uh, I, I think maybe I'm remembering the other Veterati person that you highlighted, where if I'm remembering correctly, it was some uh, 80 people, maybe even more responded to it, lots of comments. So when you get 80 people look at it, you're getting probably, if I'm guesstimating, probably about 3,000, maybe 3,500 people uh, see that. And so that, that rings out. 
And, and the more that you start to vocalize, and not only that, but find your own voice, um, 12,000 views, there you go. Um, so the more that you can find your own voice and start putting it out, you're going to start helping others. And people are going to resonate with that. Uh, I just was nudging somebody where she posted. I said, you know what? You're looking for diversity roles. You need to start talking about diversity. Why aren't I seeing diversity comments on LinkedIn? And so she wrote a post. And within a day, because she's built her network behind the scenes, she had a thousand people look at it. And so that's what opens doors. And I said, and I said to her, I said, there's going to be a day when people are going to reach out to you and say, your post really helped me. And so, and then she responded, she said, it's already happened. I, I can't believe it. So now she's hooked. So my reason for sharing that story with you all is if you're passive on LinkedIn, get more active and you're going to see a lot of doors open up for you there as well. And so I know, um, uh, it's not specific to reaching out, but it's definitely exposing yourself to, to what is possible. So now we're going to talk about networking online. And I'm going to go through, and I'd like you all to read these, the five ways you can network online. Well, obviously, number one is kind of on hold with the pandemic, but we'll go through all those. So let's, but even so, even if you were standing in line at the grocery store and you have an honest conversation through your face mask, you still might be able to talk to someone and, and meet someone at an event. Um, so these are the five that we're going to talk about real quick. Uh, obviously in person, you know, before the pandemic, there were all these wonderful events, USO Pathfinder, CMA here in San Antonio, Hiring Our Heroes, and there are a lot of other organizations that definitely help people. Um, Colleagues suggest the connection. I know our good friend, Dan Collins, I know you've suggested several connections to me. That's always helpful when somebody suggests the connection. And then with another person outside your network. And this is the part where I think you're gonna find the most value because you know people obviously, right? Um, yeah, you know people. So let's look at the elements of a good construction note, shall we? They define their purpose right away. And they have a tie back to something that should be of interest to the other person. You know, you were talking about the conversation when you're interjecting with a conversation three. So what were you talking about? What's of interest to those people? What's the in it for me element? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. So when you meet someone in an event, and folks, I will be glad to send you these, these sample notes, but I hope you'll find something that resonates with you. This is a, something like a Chamber of Commerce or a PMI or something like that. Again, you tie it back to them. You suggest a place to connect and you also suggest something that might be of interest to them. And Matt, if you don't mind, a, a small example here. Um, so find out what the other people value and meet them where they are. So obviously the use of Zoom has really increased. We can assume that a lot of people are comfortable with, with using Zoom. I don't make that assumption. I'll ask, do you prefer Zoom or do you prefer phone? Because there are those that are resistant to that. So just those small little things can help build, build those bridges. Good point. Uh, and I, I will set up a Zoom and say, hey, I just want to talk on the phone. Fine. Let's talk on the phone. I want you to be comfortable with our first conversation. Yep. Um, this is when somebody suggests you connect with them. So this is a, a note that I've worked up. You know, somebody that a friend of Sally's got her, a friend named Jane, her son or daughter is going into military and, she, you know, I was hoping they could have, you could help them understand what it's going to be like for, for their child to be at a basic training yep. boot camp. So this is a very effective way to connect with people 
and again the tie back so if you read something that Gus wrote or I wrote now you say this is why I want to connect with you here's something you accept my request to connect yep yeah brief brief story there um, so there was a time my wife's a teacher so there was a time when I was considering you know doing coaching for the education space uh, bottom line is I realized I not served a single day in education. I don't have the credibility other than seeing, you know, my wife's experiences secondhand, uh, you know, or experiencing what my wife uh, has gone through secondhand. And so when I was exploring that route, I saw a post. She was the uh, 2000, and I think this was back in 18, so 2018 LinkedIn voice for education. And so she had a post, I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, let me comment on here. She responded and I used that to say, all right, well, let me, let me reach out to her and see if I can build a relationship here. And I was surprised when she accepted my connection within five minutes and it was really based upon just what uh, Matt sharing here. And so we were able to start a little bit of relationship and ultimately she advised, yeah, you're going to have a real hard time, uh, you know, gaining credibility in in this space. And so I said, okay, well, you know what? I appreciate, you know, you you sharing and being honest with me, uh, because now you're saving me a lot of time and energy and heartburn. So, uh, and not only that, but she's from the Chicago area, so that helped as well. Um, I'm sorry, Matt. Go ahead. All yours. No, I, I, I. That's exactly what happens when you do that. Is like. With, you know, if somebody writes me a meaningful letter, I'm going to follow back as quickly as possible. Yep. So that's your opportunity to, to you know, complete the relationship. I think that's how you and I connected a couple months ago. Yep. Six months ago, wasn't it? Seems like it. Seems like yesterday. Yeah, it was, I think, early, early fall last year. Yeah. Thanks to R.G. Garcia. The famous R.G. Garcia. So... If you're in transition with some force, this is one of the suggestions from one of our other colleagues, uh, Herb. In this situation, you know, the person recognizes that Don was a former civil engineer and he really interested in working in construction. How do I, you know, how do I reach out to him? And, and again, it's got the who I am and how you can help me. Uh, within the context of the connection note. And oh. then you want to move to a new location. So you're in uh, Western Germany and you want to come back to San Antonio or DC. And this is a suggested note I would use for that is like, hey, I saw, you know, I'm leaving here, I'm coming back to this area. I'm learning more about the chapter organization perhaps we can connect when you have some time yep yeah so um matt i think one important nugget as we're discussing all these and these are great examples i, I love them um one one thing is recognizing that a lot of people aren't active on linkedin they may not check their inboxes so don't accept not responding, them not responding or accepting your request to connect on LinkedIn as a no. Yeah, and some people, I've, I've seen some people take up a week to connect because they're yeah. not using LinkedIn every day. Yeah. yeah. And, and so if it's really important to you, what you can do is you can look up what their current employer is and the exact tool, I think there's a couple of different sites that do it. But you can find out what the email template is, you know, whether it's first name dot last name at Lockheed Martin or, you know, first initial uh, underscore last name, you know, whatever their email format is, you can do some research and figure that out and then just send them an email, you know, using the same, uh, obviously you've got, don't have the character limitation, but you, so you still want to keep it uh, brief and concise. But just, just another uh, nugget for y'all. And that brings up a key point, which we didn't really cover, but we should cover. 
and that is on your contact points, put more than just your uh, uh, LinkedIn profile, put your email and put a phone number where you can be reached at as well, okay? Yep. All right, Gus, now we're at the end of this lovely hour of information. Please. So, so yep, there's about 90 of us so far. Um, if you wanna join the networking uh, lab discussion group, uh, please feel free. You don't need to break out your cameras to get the QR code. I've just posted the link into the chat for you. But again, it's a safe space. It's people that I've connected with, people that are uh, really interested in the work that I'm doing, people that may need some help, people that maybe they've landed successfully. So again, you never know who you're gonna meet. You're never gonna know what opportunities are behind those. So um, just an opportunity to come introduce yourself and, and start building and, and growing your network. Um, one thing that I want to, to do is I want to actually start giving, so the whole concept of the networking lab is I wanna treat some things like an experiment. So in other words, you know, uh, for those familiar with marketing and you wanna do A-B testing, do you do approach A or you do approach A with one group and then you do approach B with another group and you see, all right, what was more effective here? And what did I learn from that experiment? and how I'm gonna move forward uh, based off of that. So I wanna get more active and you know, setting up more of those. So that's, that's what you can get from uh, the discussion group. And, and you know, Gus, I'm more than happy to help you anytime. All you gotta do is say, hey Matt, will you reach out to your network? So yep. I think we know a few people to get collectively together when we throw in Daniel Collins. That, and that's a, <laughs> yeah. We could probably touch thousands of people. Absolutely. And I'm just going to do a short plug for my new book, which I just got in the mail today, bigger, uh, more in depth than the previous book. And you can find it on Amazon.com. And that concludes our uh, talk for the evening. Um, I'm open to questions if you have them. Don't throw me around. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it, Dan Collins. And Dan, that actually brings up a good point. Um, this is one of my former colleagues. Uh, she connected me with somebody out of the blue. Uh, she provided a little bit of context. Um, so when you go to make introductions with others, always make sure and check in with people that they would both value the introduction. And so, hey, I'm thinking of this might be a good connection for you, but you tell me, well, this, would you value meeting this person? And then you do the same thing. And then if you get two yeses, now you can uh, introduce them. You provide a little bit of context as to why you think that relationship uh, may work. And then you provide a little bit of background and how you, how you know them and, and really tee up that, that discussion. 